The International Institute for Peace introduced a series of interviews with experts and analysts from its neighboring region to see how they deal with the situation with uh, the pandemic COVID-19 domestically, but also regionally. What implications does it have uh, from a security point of view for the region, but also for international security and the European Union specifically? We already did some interviews on the Western Balkans, on Belarus, on Israel, and also on the US. And today we are going to talk about Lebanon and the implication COVID-19 has there on a uh, domestic level, on the society from an economic point of view, but also from a security point of view. You can see our interviews and videos on our webpage, iapvienna.com or on Facebook. And I'm very happy today to welcome Sami Nader uh, directly from Beirut, Lebanon, who is going to talk with me today for the next uh, 20 minutes. Welcome, Sami. Um, Welcome. Thank you for receiving me and uh, kudos for this great initiative. Thank you very much. Um, maybe very short uh, to introduce you. Sami Nader is an economist. Um, he's uh, also dealing with the Middle Eastern affairs and he currently also directs the Levant Institute for Strategic Affairs, focusing mostly on economics and geopolitics for the Levant uh, region. He's furthermore also a professor at the St. Joseph's University, Beirut. So thank you very much again for, for having my pleasure. your time and talking to me. Um, maybe my first question would be more on the domestic level. And um, so my first question would be the, now with this COVID pandemic, um, how is uh, Lebanon um, performing at the moment? What are the direct health uh, related impacts uh, for the society? Also taking into account the, the big uh, wave of prost uh, protests, which has been in Beirut and in, in all of the countries mm. starting from October 2019 until also ongoing even until now a little bit. What is your personal, um, what can you assess? Uh, how is the domestic situation there? Uh, thank you. First of all, on the pandemic level, on the COVID-19 uh, level, Lebanon is uh, is doing quite well. I mean, the, the number of uh, deaths is uh, relatively uh, very slow. It's uh, it's under uh, 20 deaths. The, while the number of... Uh, of uh, people contaminated are uh, 630. Now, is it this due to the low level of testing? This is uh, possible. However, the death rate is uh, relatively uh, very uh, low. And I think this is the case in most of the Arab countries uh, because of uh, we, are, we are here uh, in face of uh, uh, young countries. The average age does not exceed 27, 28 uh, at, the, at, the Arab, uh, at the Arab level. And this is the, uh, the average age in the region, which is a stark difference uh, with uh, Europe. Where the, we have, uh, you can you can see an aging population. So maybe this played in favor of uh, the region of countries like uh, Lebanon, and Jordan, and uh, even uh, Egypt. However, uh, the the impact of the, of this COVID nineteen on the economic side would be detrimental. And um, detrimental maybe is uh, not enough, it can be catastrophic. Why? Because uh, in Lebanon in particular, uh, this uh, COVID-99 was what it means in terms of uh, freezing the economy came uh, to amplify an existing economic crisis. Lebanon was going through um, a financial uh, collapse. Uh, uh, and this is something that uh, unseen in its uh, uh, history, the Lebanese pound has uh, already uh, lost 150% uh, of its uh, value. Uh, inflation uh, is uh, skyrocketing. It, uh, it reached uh, 70% uh, lately in the last uh, weeks. And uh, this would mean that uh, 90 percent, uh, 50% of the Lebanese population, according to the World Bank, are under the line of uh, poverty. This is something unseen 
for a country uh, like uh, Lebanon. And if you take it uh, uh, at the at the regional uh, level, uh, things are maybe worse in Syria, where you have a country not uh, only uh, economically collapsing, but is uh, 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 politically. Uh, in total uh, array as well. I mean, uh, and there you cannot uh, you cannot count the number uh, of uh, COVID nineteen cases. Um, uh, maybe maybe with the exception uh, of uh, Jordan, uh, all the the countries in the region Syria, uh, Lebanon, uh, Iraq uh, took a very uh, very bold hit uh, on this uh, because we we uh, this uh, this pandemic came uh, on the top of a system in crisis in Lebanon it's the the, the economy uh, and uh, maybe uh, as well the the politics because the government in place uh, that not did not uh, succeed yet in uh, getting the country uh, back uh, on track and to uh, fix uh, the deep uh, political divide in the country. And the situation in Syria, uh, maybe you know it uh, very well, uh, there uh, the war is still, uh, is still uh, on, uh, not as it was uh, five years ago, but uh, nothing has been done uh, yet. At the level of the peace process to book, to put the country uh, back on the peace track. Um, all right. So you say that um, for the time being, like the health, the direct health uh, impact are not really that felt very, very tensely, intensely in in Lebanon. Um, but especially the economic situation is going to worse, considering all, exactly. already that it has been already uh, quite devastating before. But maybe one more thing on the domestic level, because Lebanon is in a very specific situation when it comes to the amount of refugees also living within the countries. I mean, you have still uh, around 500,000 Palestinians from 48 and 67 uh, wars. But also, of course, um, due to the to the war in, in, in Syria, Lebanon has been uh, affected a lot by, by receiving many, many refugees. How is the situation there um, in the camps when it comes to the COVID situation? economic situation, but also health-wise. Would you say it's similar than to the normal population in, in Lebanon? It's uh, even worse, uh, although now the, the, the difference between uh, the Lebanese, given the, the impact of the economic crisis, uh, the difference between uh, the Lebanese and the Syrian are, are de is decreasing by the day, given that uh, everyone now is uh, equal <laughs> in terms of uh, poverty. However, however, the housing uh, condition of some of the refugees are uh, are very uh, difficult. They live uh, in camps. The COVID nineteen came in plain winter and. Uh, this uh, makes things uh, difficult, uh, not in terms of uh, humanitarian uh, or medical uh, uh, hit, but in terms of economics, because uh, those uh, Syrian uh, refugees are daily workers. They, they used to count on uh, daily revenue from their daily work, and this has stopped, has stopped. Uh, has decreased at first because of the economic crisis and has totally stopped because of the COVID-19 uh, uh, problem and the uh, lockdown. Uh, just to give you an example, some of these uh, families um, were receiving from the United Nations the equivalent of uh, uh, $26, which means 40,000 uh, Lebanese lira uh, as a daily uh, budget to uh, cater for their basic uh, needs. Today, uh, or like uh, one week ago or two weeks ago, the UN increased this budget to 50,000. So they increased this, uh, this budget uh, by uh, 20%. However, in terms of value, what used to amount for $26 is today $12. That 40,000 that uh, were uh, uh, equal to uh, $26 uh, 
the 50,000 today are equal to $12. This gives you an example of the dwindling purchasing power and uh, how uh, difficult uh, is uh, the situation for the Syrian uh, refugee. All the more, most of them cannot uh, return uh, to their country uh, first because of uh, the uh, security, the security concern they have, they they fear they are jailed by or pers per per persecuted by uh, the, the regime, or because uh, simply they don't have uh, any shelter. Their houses uh, were uh, destroyed. They, uh, the schools for their kids uh, are uh, destroyed as well and the basic infrastructure uh, the, didn't work, like the electricity. So this is why they prefer to remain uh, in their camps where they have platforms. The, the basic, uh, I, I would not say that their basic needs, but the, the situation inside the camp is better uh, than uh, back to their countries. And they, most of them, they cannot return to their uh, villages. Because their houses were, as I, I said, were either destroyed or uh, taken uh, by the by the government or by the de facto uh, uh, powers uh, there. Uh, so the the Syrian and this bodes uh, very ill for uh, first of all uh, the security of Lebanon, because uh, if you look at, at the macro level you are in a country that is impoverished, that is financially collapsing, that is incapable of fixing its problem and uh, knocking at the door of the IMF to try to see how to, to fix the problem. So you have this, this big financial and economic mess, plus you have a political and sectarian division. And this is a recipe for a uh, let, it, let us put it in a mild term for destabilization. Mm -hmm. And if uh, Lebanon is destabilized, uh, this is not a good sign or this bodes ill for the neighborhood as well. Uh, and this is where I see that Europe, uh, despite the fact that is today uh, focused on dealing with the uh, COVID crisis, uh, should... Uh, uh, pay uh, more attention on uh, what's uh, happening uh, in in the other uh, eastern side of the Mediterranean. Um, maybe if we speak a little bit to what is going on in Lebanon right now, because you mentioned the political division and also the, the problems which come, of course, with the multi-ethnical um, uh, idea of governing governing the country at this stage. And we also, uh, Lebanon has a new government already and, um, now since mm. January. So how is it performing? And especially also what role does uh, Hezbollah play at the moment, like did it shift from before or did it get stronger? And especially now also in the in the COVID pandemic, I mean, do you have the feeling that Hezbollah, especially also in the rural areas, is it more present there? Is it uh, doing uh, delivering more social and economic services or how do the population see it now at the moment from within Lebanon? Yes, uh, first of all, as you know, we uh, we had a revolution in Lebanon since October uh, 17. This uh, revolution uh, succeeded in uh, toppling the, uh, the Hariri uh, government. Okay. And uh, another... And, and another government was uh, put uh, in place uh, uh, and it, it tried to cater for the revolution demand for an independent government. However, uh, although this uh, government has, has, has a facade of uh, a technocrat and independent people, and uh, some of the ministers have a very uh, good uh, uh, series, uh, however, it proved not to be uh, independent. It proved that it's uh, still controlled by the traditional political forces and the same modus operandi is in place and Hezbollah got the, the upper hand. And the evidence uh, for, uh, for that is that uh, until now the government uh, hasn't succeeded to take uh, any decision 
in terms of reform or in terms of uh, the necessary measures to uh, salvage the, the economic uh, crisis. Uh, it starts with the nomination, the measures concerning the capital control, the haircut every time. Uh, we see a proposal, it, it, don't, it doesn't go through. So up to now, uh, this uh, government did not uh, face up to the challenge of the crisis. And this is why we're seeing that despite the lockdown, some youngs are starting to protest by uh, car convoys. And this, uh, uh, this is a sign that um, in, 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 in weeks, not to say in days, when the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic will recede, uh, I'm, I'm practically sure that uh, we're, uh, we're, uh, we will be facing another wave uh, of protest that would be different from those uh, that prevailed uh, in, uh, in the, the, uh, the autumn 2019. I foresee more violence uh, for this uh, protest, given the, the tough uh, economic uh, conditions. Um, uh, while for Hezbollah, it's the, it is the the. I mean, this is the the the, the dominant force inside the, the government. So it's fair to say it's um, it's a pro Hezbollah uh, uh, government. Uh, now, uh, how Hezbollah is faring uh, in, uh, to, to counter the COVID-19? Um, Hezbollah has installed its own hospitals. And here, uh, what's uh, striking is how uh, we've seen decentralized solution uh, to, to cater for this uh, pandemic. Like every region, uh, like the Christian sides was, was taking care of its own hospitals. Uh, Hezbollah installed makeshift hospital in its region. At first, there was um, a kind of uh, uh, general feeling that uh, Hezbollah uh, took uh, put pressure on the government not to stop the flights coming from Iran. And, uh, and there were suspicions that some uh, uh, COVID-19 cases, uh, Iranian cases, came from Iran to, uh, to Beirut uh, hospitals under uh, the control of uh, Hezbollah. And this was not received well before the uh, airport uh, uh, has been uh, closed and the flights were uh, interrupted. Uh, however, uh, however, at, at a larger uh, scale, I would say that uh, today, in my view, back to the to the economic uh, to the economic side, or uh, and to domestic affairs and uh, the priorities ahead, uh, given the the tough situation uh, Lebanon is going through, I'm seeing only one one single solution. Uh, out of this crisis is an IMF program. Up to now, this IMF program uh, is not uh, accepted by Hezbollah clearly. At first, it was rejected by them uh, under uh, the auspices or because their argument was that this IMF uh, is, a, is an American ploy or is an American and they won't be subjected to this uh, American uh, will. Uh, however, I think they came uh, to realize and all the stakeholders came to realize that whatever we do, even if we do all the reforms, this is not enough anymore. And we need an injection of liquidity uh, in order uh, to save what remains uh, from the uh, what remains from the productive sector and in order as well to finance the social and economic program we need to help people facing this pandemic and facing the economic crisis we need injection of liquidity and for this there is one address today which is the imf uh, imf may be not a magic formula it's very criticized but i'm afraid that we have no other options 
especially that all the European donors, all the GCC countries donors, all agree on a fact that uh, they won't help Lebanon uh, unless under uh, the uh, an IMF program, because they want a commitment that uh, Lebanon will go th- will go through reforms, which. Uh, uh, the government uh, haven't uh, achieved for the last uh, decades. No single reforms, structural, substantial reform has been achieved. So now the question is IMF or not IMF? And uh, and we're waiting. We're waiting. The government should uh, take a position. The prime minister should take a position uh, this week, uh, I hope. I hope he will give... Uh, a sign or a commitment that they are uh, they are positive or they have made made up uh, their mind to go and ask for an IMF program. If is if this is not the case, I'm I'm really worried about uh, the future of this small country. So you said that I am IMF uh, credit will probably be the option at the moment, but it is not really. Um, population is not really, and also the political elites are not so sure about how 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 this is going to turn out, how to per- perceive that as well. Maybe if we stay one more second also with the, the economic situation, because we also heard about the oil prices being very very low last year, uh, last week, uh, even going below below zero. How does this impact? I mean, Lebanon and the Middle East. What would you say? Thank you. Thank you for the question. This is a very good question, actually. Starting with Lebanon, I mean, this is a good news and a bad news at the same time. This is a good news because we are an oil importing country. And when you see that the now you froze. Still, um, we're still funding the uh, electricity and left like 40 uh, this is, should mean uh, a decrease on our uh, government expenditures. Uh, however, this is a bad news uh, because, uh, you know, uh, Lebanon was uh, largely counting uh, on uh, the remittances, the transfer of uh, Lebanese, the Lebanese uh, working in the GCC countries and the Lebanese diaspora in general. But 50, 50, 55% of this Lebanese diaspora live in the GCC countries. And uh, Lebanon counts on uh, their transfer. Uh, this is our major source of, uh, of foreign exchange, uh, which is key today, which is key today because this is at the heart, uh, at the core, uh, of the economic problem uh, we're going through, uh, that this uh, current account deficit that reach alarming levels uh, lately. And uh, so our uh, only, uh, um, our only, uh, I mean, the main source of our revenues um, or, or foreign revenues was those transfer and those will take a hit because the oil decline will mean a kind of recession in the GCC countries and the oil producing countries. And this would, uh, would, uh, uh, would constitute a serious impediment to, uh, those, uh, to, our, uh, to our public finances. Um, on the on the regional level, on the regional level, uh, this is uh, this raises a lot of question, you know, because a lot of uh, the big project in the GCC countries where uh, where they were making their uh, plan. The, look, for instance, in Saudi Arabia, the twenty thirty vision, the twenty. Uh, Yes, and all the big mega projects that they were uh, uh, that were planified, and some of them were uh, were initiated, were based on calculation, uh, on calculation of uh, uh, and forecast of giving uh, uh, an oil price uh, uh, rate, 
and or at least on average and what we've seen is a total uh, collapse of this uh, oil price which will uh, will put into question the stability of some countries some uh, international relations when it comes to uh, russia uh, real uh, objectives and and russia strategies let's say in the region let's not forget that uh, uh, Russia uh, main object or counts uh, mainly on its uh, energy uh, revenues and uh, its one and the energy and their energy uh, uh, priorities or concern was uh, the number one motives in interfering in in the region. Uh, if we take into consideration uh, the the dynamic. Uh, in the eastern Mediterranean, where uh, oil and gas uh, has have been recently discovered uh, in the Mediterranean, uh, a declining in the price may make these uh, big and regional uh, countries reconsider uh, this position. All the investment that Turkey is uh, go and risk Turkey is taking in interfering uh, in Libya, will it remain the same if the oil prices will uh, prove uh, to stay at very low level? So there is a lot of... Um, uh, there is a lot of uncertainties, and this uh, decline in oil uh, prices, uh, it's uh, definitely uh, one major uh, source of risk and uh, of uh, uncertainties to come. Okay, and uh, maybe one last question, uh, also a little bit on the on the um, on the external actors. Maybe I mean we, we have been you have been mentioning the European Union a little bit before, and also we did not talk now about uh, the US, and uh, you mentioned also Russia a little bit in, in in the region. But what would you say? How could the European Union, for example, could it play a role in in stabilizing Lebanon and the region at this moment, even though the pandemic is still ongoing? I think that uh, definitely Europe uh, can play uh, a role, uh, first of all, uh, uh, given the, the rising uh, tension between Washington and Iran uh, on uh, one side uh, and, uh, and uh, the, the impact uh, that uh, this rising t tension is having on the different levels. Europe can definitely play a role in pushing forward the peace roadmap in Syria. Uh, especially now that the military operations seems to be uh, on the decline. The, the, the only clashes that we, we see is in Idlib and even in Idlib is uh, receding uh, by now. Uh, and um, because uh, uh, Europe has a major, uh, still has a card to play, which is uh, the reconstruction of uh, Syria. Uh, more directly, it can play uh, a big role uh, in, uh, in Lebanon by, uh, uh, by supporting and pushing Lebanon to this IMF program and kind of sponsoring this program uh, program because Europe can still uh, and maybe it's the only party that can uh, put together donors especially from the GCC country the GCC countries still trust some uh, European countries and um, so it can play a role uh, uh, to to, to, to find a platform, a viable platform uh, to uh, a viable platform to deal with the Lebanese economic crisis. We all know that Europeans, the Germans, maybe the French are in indirect contact with the Iranian or direct contact. And at the same time, they still have very good relationship with some key GCC countries, with Washington. And here they can, in my view, play a role in uh, providing this platform uh, that Lebanon needs uh, to get out of uh, its uh, financial uh, uh, crisis. These are two opportunities uh, I see uh, for uh, Lebanon. 
and um, and and uh, I think as well you know, at the level of the this dynamic that's taking place in the Mediterranean, uh, the 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 aggressive comeback of or the yeah aggressive comeback of Turkey and Russia uh, in the Mediterranean is creating a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, turbulences and uh, starting with Libya. And uh, uh, here as well, I can see uh, an active. Uh, actually, Europe should play a role because what is at stake uh, it's it's uh, security, because these activities uh, or this movement is taking place at its southern border, and Europe cannot be silent or inactive or only focus on its dealing with uh, COVID nineteen uh, problems. There is, uh, there are a lot of uh, things that's happening uh, in the region, and uh, this uh, directly impact uh, Europe, its uh, security, and um, uh, definitely uh, European uh, role is. Uh, uh, there is a room for a European role today more than ever. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sami Nader, for this very uh, interesting interview. Uh, uh, we have been talking a little bit about the domestic situation, the political situation in Lebanon, then how it is located between Syria and, and, and Israel on the other side. And then you have like all these external actors. So it's a very, very, I would say, vibrant uh, situation. Hopefully, let's hope that it's going to turn out uh, more positive than it looks now at the moment. And thank you very much also for reminding us always that the uh, um, the security in the region does also backlash then to the European Union because, as you rightly say, it is our neighborhood as well. And so we should also work there for stability um, together. Thank you very much, um, Sami. My for pleasure. Time. And uh, I hope you stay safe and uh, you and your family and uh, see you again, hopefully pretty soon. Thank you very much. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye.